Okay, check test. Hello, hello. How is everybody? Sounds like it's working. Excellent. We need a little bit more light here. I'm so blue. That's for sure. I am so blue. Uh, no, I'm not. How's everybody? Doing well. Sounds like we've got a few folks in. As usual, as soon as the stream starts, everything drops and then they come back. I cannot figure that out. That's really weird. All right, we'll hang here for a minute. Because we had quite a few people in earlier. Hello, Two Feathers. Still 60s there. Yeah, it was nice today here. Uh, I'm getting some sun, though. I don't know if you can see this or not. You can kind of see my watch band. <laughs> Let's see. We need to get the blue out of my face. Like there. Yeah, and we probably ought to come this way just a touch so you're not seeing my monitor. How is that? Okay, that looks pretty good. Okie dokie, let's see here. Who all is in? Jesse Bradley uh, was in early and made a comment. He, or she, they, I should guess I should say they. I'm not sure who it is. That's one of those unisex names like mine. I found your video on RV black tanks. Now I'm wanting on the waiting on the manual <clears throat> so I can ask intelligent questions. Am my tank unclogged? Your advice was stupendous. Well, thanks, Jesse. That's excellent to hear. Um, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> that's why we do the live stream. You can ask any question here. There are no uninformed or stupid questions. Uh, just stupid answers from your host. And I try to keep those to a minimum. Tim Myers is in. Robert Covington says... Uh, hello from Tennessee. He is. Uh, he says, you know, it's not good <clears throat> when you hear a thud and your wife says, I need a little help in here. Uh, the fridge door fell off. Wow. That's wild. <laughs> uh, and then it says, uh, I saw somebody else mention that. We'll uh, <clears throat> get to that in a minute. Uh, Judy Kimbrough says, hello from hell. Really, Alabama. Hi, Judy. Nice to have you in tonight. Jeff Rippingler's in from Colorado. Um, Judy says she's had that happen before. I guess her fridge door has fallen off. Too many canned drinks. Uh, Judy, Judy says it's hot as. Yeah. Um, not that bad here. Eric Myers is in Scott City, Kansas. Spent a week there one night. Kidding. Just kidding. Uh, Vincent RV Life's in from Richmond, Virginia. Robert Covington says peach tea. No, not peach tea. Uh, this is uh, Lipton iced tea. Sun tea, actually. Uh, Two Feather says it's still in the 60s there in Washington. Yeah, it was a beautiful day today here. It was probably, well, it's showing 76 and not much wind. And it is the first day of summer, by the way. Uh, the summer solstice was like at 3 o'clock this morning. I didn't. I wasn't up for it, so what can I say? Uh, Tim Myers is headed to Virginia in 15 days. Uh, take your five-day deodorant pads, Tim, and let me know how they, how they wear. I'm kidding. Uh, <clears throat> Tom Downey says he loves Oak Harbor in the summer, 72 degrees and clear. Yeah, that's a that's about perfect. Is it uh, your sound or mine? It must be yours, Eric. I think mine is fine. I will double check your here. Mind. Yeah, that's okay. Sounds a little hollow. So, oh, and let me close that. Get a little bit more of the blue out. <clears throat> and over in the chat, uh, Tim says, Eric. Uh, okay, and okay, got it. Okay. So, uh, a little update on Yellowstone. Uh, as you've probably heard by now, Yellowstone uh, Park this will open on the 22nd. That is tomorrow. <clears throat> and what they're going to do is the south loop is going to be open. So, on this map here, you'll see that 
Um, the green roads will be open. Uh, the yellow roads are under construction. So the road from Old Faithful to West Thumb is under construction and will be closed at night while they work on it. And then they're replacing the Lewis River Bridge. So uh, that will be overnight closures and you can expect delays. <clears throat> so uh, the east entrance is open. Uh, and then everything north of Norris and Canyon is still closed. Here's the situation. If you don't know this, I'll give you a little bit of information about the uh, Yellowstone Park. Mammoth, which is up north there, you see it up at the top of that map, is the headquarters for the park. Okay, So all the administrivia and everything goes on at Mammoth. And the road from Mammoth to the north entrance washed out. Um, I've got some slides I'll show you here in a minute that I've collected uh, from the National Park Service. Anyway, um, so that's really a cumbersome uh, because all of the administration is done at Mammoth. Um, now, they're talking about possibly opening the north entrance a little later this summer. Apparently, there's an old wagon trail. That's what they call it. It's probably a dirt road, and that's probably what all the administrative traffic is on. But there was, I mean, there's housing there. I mean, it's Mammoth is huge, and... Um, um, so that's a real problem for the Park Service, I believe. I think they're really going to be hating it for sure. The northeast entrance, which goes out to Red Lodge, uh, is that's Beartooth Pass and up through there. And they just got that open here like within the last three or four or five weeks. Uh, they end up having to blow snow out of that. Uh, you know, snow drifts in there can get 30, 35 feet deep. Uh, so they end up having to blow that road open, and so it's usually the last one to open in Yellowstone Park. So along with the restrictions on where you can go, let's see, they're going to start something called alternate entry. Uh, this will be temporary. <clears throat> My guess it's going to be temporary for at least two years, um, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. But the crux of it is, is that <clears throat> if you have an even numbered last digit in your license plate and or you have a personalized plate with even numbered last digit, including zero, and then motorcycle groups are all going to be allowed to enter on even days of the month. So tomorrow when the park reopens, at least the southern entrances, um, people with even numbered license plates or you, you see it there. Odd numbered days, the last digit of the plate is odd. Uh, you have an odd number, so the last number in your plate, you know how some of the <clears throat> some of these vanity plates, they've got a mixture of uh, numbers and letters. Uh, and if it's an odd number, is the last one in the plate. Or you have a personalized plate without numbers, then you'll go in on odd days. And of course, they've got commercial operators uh, with active commercial permits. Visitors with proof of overnight reservations will be allowed to enter anytime. Commercial motor coaches and essential services, you know, like mail, delivery, employees, contractors, all that sort of stuff. Those are all going to be allowed in any day of the month. So basically remember, odd digit equals odd days of the month. Even digit equals even days of the month. My guess is, is they're going to have to do that for couple years the fact of the matter is is that here let's flip over to this and uh, we'll take a little look at some of the <clears throat> damage that was done these roads you see here that are washed away especially like here and you know they're right up against the edge of a mountain there is tons of excavation that's going to have to go on to get those roads back in place the long and short of it is is that there's mammoth right there by the way the long and short of it is, you got to get a stream alteration permit uh, before you can go working around any water. And it's usually the states involved and the feds are involved. The Corps of Engineers are typically the ones that take care of water permits and stuff like that. And of course, you got the Park Service. So you got bureaucracy upon bureaucracy upon bureaucracy. And it's going to take forever to get the stream alteration permits plus. The length of time it's going to take to construct this stuff, 
it, it's just amazing to think about. Keep in mind, all the damage is in the north. All the entrances to get to the damage are in the south. And so the trucking involved, how many trucks is it going to take, and, and all of the stuff that's going to go on to get these roads rebuilt. Now, let's add on to that the fact that Yellowstone, you can't build roads probably until maybe May 1st on a good year to October 15th. So you have a very short window of opportunity to do the road construction you need to do. So you add all of that together, and I don't care how many billions of dollars they throw at this, you can't slow down the clock, and it's going to take time to get these roads reopened. You can bet that their biggest priority is going to be that road from the north entrance down to Mammoth, okay? Um, because of all of the administration that has to go on there. Then, when you think about it, I'll run back over here to the map real quick so we can talk about this. The road from Mammoth Hot Springs to Norris was damaged as well, okay? So if you're coming from the administration up around Mammoth <clears throat> and you're heading to, let's say, uh, uh, West Thumb, then you have to drive through Norris <clears throat> and then over to Madison through Old Faithful or you go over to Canyon Village, down to Fishing Bridge, blah, 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 okay? Well, without those roads accessible, you have to go from the north entrance all the way to Bozeman. Then you pick up US 1, uh, it's, Monta it's 287, I think it is, is what it is. And that comes south to West Yellowstone, or the west entrance there on the left side of the map. And then you could go in and do your business if you're, you know, on the administration side of it. So it's going to be a long, painful <clears throat> recovery for Yellowstone. I hate to be a pessimist. I'd like to think more of it like being a realist. So that's kind of what I'm expecting for Yellowstone, um, at least for the next couple of years. If they have the north entrance and the north end open by 2024, I would be really surprised. So, anyway, uh, let's go over and check out the uh, chat window. By the way, if you have any questions or comments, be sure and throw them over in the chat window. Uh, I'm happy to answer your questions there. Also, <clears throat> if you... Uh, don't want to chat and you would rather ask it via email, that's just fine. You can email me, trbolin at gmail.com, and uh, I'd be happy to get back to you. Um, I'm usually pretty good about getting back to people within, well, I usually try to do it the, this, the next day. Sometimes I might skip up like I did with Tim <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I, I read his email and then forgot about it, and stuff like that happens, so... Uh, but usually I get right back to folks. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Judy says it was 96 there today and 55% humidity. Ouch. Eric had a poor connection. As soon as we got that sorted out. Vincent to Tim says, we are getting ready to head to the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York around the 4th of July. Awesome. Sounds like a fun trip. Robert Black's in. Hi, Robert. So nice to see you. Tim says, you're going in the right direction. I would agree with that. I wouldn't want to go to Virginia in July. I've been to Virginia in July. It's, it's hot. It's ugly. Uh, <laughs> two feathers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris Hauser. Hello from Scottsville, Kentucky, staying at the Barren River Resort RV State Park. Not many people there. Yeah, I've heard about that place. I've never been there. Um, but yeah, I've, I've uh, been near there. Uh, I, was on, I did the Bourbon Trail back in 2012. And so I spent a lot of time uh, motoring around Kentucky. Uh, Vincent says, lots of lakes in upstate New York help keep things cool. Yeah. 
Uh, Tom Downey says, every week I must refresh the link to your web by logging off and then reopen your page. Then I can see you and get your voice. Why? I don't know, Tom. And maybe that explains um, why, because I, I, I noticed this. This is already a little off topic, but every week I'll be watching, and I have a screen over here I can see that, well, I'll share it with you. There's nothing to... There's nothing private on it. I got to let me bring it over here, and then I think if I do this, does that get me there? Oh yeah, but I need to move this over here, so you can kind of see here, and so you can see what I see. We have 14 concurrent viewers. There's only been two likes, so give me that thumbs up real quick, folks, would you? Uh, some other information, uh, stream settings, and all that sort of stuff. So what'll happen is, is every time I start. As soon as things start, the concurrent viewers will drop down to like almost nothing. And then it takes like five minutes. And I guess that's probably what's happening, Tom, is, is people are having to rejoin and, and do a bunch of noise like that. Um, I don't get why th that would be the case. <clears throat> but uh, I guess I'll do some research and see if I can figure out what's going on there. Um, because it is annoying. And I've noticed it for a while. I don't know if it's something I have in my settings. Making myself a note here so I don't forget to, uh, to look into that. Uh, Mary Stankiewicz is in. Uh, good hot evening from Cleveland. Hope everyone is doing well. Thanks, Mary. So nice to have you here tonight. Two feathers. Odd even reminds me of the gas crisis in the 70s. Yeah, it sure does, doesn't it? Um, you know, a lot of, well, more and more of the national parks are having to go to some kind of a reservation uh, system. Um, you know, like parts of uh, Arches now uh, require permits to, like Hiking Angels Landing requires a, a permit. Uh, you can get same day sometimes or next day. <clears throat> those are a lottery. They they come up and it's like first come first serve, I believe, on those. And then you can get some in advance. Uh, like Yosemite, you know, they're bussing people. Zion for a long time now. You have to bus in to a lot of uh, the lower part of Zion. Uh, there's you know no personal vehicles past. What's the name of that little town right outside there? Anyway. Uh, so I think that's going to become a thing of the of the future for a lot of the more popular national parks. Ah, oh, look at that! Vincent said the same thing as two feathers, birds of a feather. Camp Gore One, hi Linda, so nice to see you here. Two feathers says the animals will go wild again. Yeah. Uh, Camp Gore asks, how's the camper roof coming along? Well, actually, um, it's the roof. <laughs> How do I explain this? Okay, so what I've done is is that to try to maintain some of the structure. Um, uh, let's see here. I'll give you a quick peek. I think the cables. Oh no, you know what? I'm not going to do that because the last time I did that, I broke the stream. Uh, okay, so anyway. The, what's, what's going on is is that I'm rebuilding parts of it because I need to maintain some structure to be able to be on the roof and do things like that. Uh, so what I'm working on right now is, is what you saw in the uh, uh, video I shared, I think it was last week, uh, the whole one side was removed. I've got that completely replaced now with new wood, uh, new interior wood because that was damaged. Uh, and I've got the structure back on it. And I worked on the driver on the passenger side today, uh, and I stripped out all the rotten wood as much as I could without, you know, hurting the structure. Because what I'm worried about is if I get too much of the structure out, the walls could start to 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 flail out like this or or twip, tip in. And so I need to try to keep those walls plumb as much as possible. I may have to do some bracing, because I kind of have come to the conclusion. Well, I, th I think I'm to the point now where I can do like half of the camper uh, and I'll do the roof, that half of the roof after I get the rest of the front part of it built. 
and then I'll tear the back off and do the back. The back, there's plenty of work to be done on it. And you'll get to see more in this Sunday's video of uh, demolition. I am doing some selective surgery, trying to get rid of all the rot. And it was quite, um, there's quite a bit. It was a bit more extensive than I anticipated. KX Racers in. Hi, bud. Yeah, so nice to see you. Uh, he put up a new video tonight. We're still working on his truck camper, getting a lot of the exterior accoutrements installed. And I didn't get to watch it. I was busy, but uh, I'll get a look at it early in the morning. Um, uh, let's see. Tom Downey, Washington State Parks at continually is booked until September. Yeah, you know, a lot of the Idaho State Parks are as well now. Um, I was looking just for fun the other day on uh, recreation.gov, which is where you can make most of, well, all of the Idaho State Parks <coughs> are now part of recreation.gov. I'm dry. I was out in the sun all day today. Um, So, yeah, a lot of the state parks here in Idaho were full. I was just poking around looking. Most of them will fill up <clears throat> even before the pandemic and everything. <clears throat> they would fill up. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to have to clear my throat here just a second. All right, that's better. They'll fill up like, uh, and the, uh, they'll fill up in early uh, late April. Um, I think it's a six month window in advance is what you can rent or what you can make your reservations for. Camp Gore One says it's a lot of work for sure. I think bracing would be good to have stability. Yeah, so I, I'm probably going to do some. Uh, I've got some long straps and I might just strap the front around and, and kind of hold it together. Or I might just build some temporary structure and temporarily hold it up. Tom Downey sent me a link to a, a Facebook listing <laughs> today or yesterday. I don't know. I saw it today uh, for a Lance truck camper over there in Washington somewhere for uh, 1500 bucks. So, yeah, you know, but what fun would that be? Campground One says, I know my Toyota is not far behind yours in condition, but my know-how is nothing close to yours. Well, thanks, Linda. And yeah, it's like uh, I said in the, when I responded to your comment the other day, um, yeah, don't touch it if you don't have to, because when you start to tear into it, then you're into it, and it's really hard to just do a little bit, um, especially if there's rot in there, um, because, you know, it just it, it creates a mess really fast. Two feathers. <clears throat> Two feathers says we need more parks. I hate being crowded. I agree. That's why I dry camp as much as I can. Darren Laddick. Hi, Darren. That's a new name. So happy to see you here tonight. Uh, he says there's been a ton of camping spots open up lately, probably due to fuel prices. Yeah, that's true. But it seems like things have stabilized. Um, we're running about 5.08 or 5.09 at the pump here. I bought fuel at Costco on Monday. I guess that was yesterday, wasn't it? <clears throat> For 5.09 or 5.499. Uh, um, so, yeah. Um, but diesel is 5.60 a gallon. Uh, that's pretty high. Tom Downey says, fun is camping, not building. Oh, I don't know about that, Tom. I enjoy both. Cax Racer, yeah, but most truck campers that are $1,500 have the same amount of wood rod as yours. Yeah, yeah, you know for sure, and you're right, uh, KX, that uh, that wood rot can be pretty insipidous, and it can hide really well, especially like, you know, in these campers and stuff and lower-end motorhomes, they use that vinyl 
oh, like wallpaper almost, but it's a vinyl covered material. And so that doesn't allow the moisture to penetrate through. So you could have water on behind and not even know you got water leaking inside. Um, that could be a real problem. Two feathers, yeah, that's pretty cheap for Lance, agreed. And that could have been like, I don't know, you know, sometimes you'll look at something and it says a dollar. And you know it's they want more than a dollar for it. I think it's because Facebook forces you to put a price in. That's what I think. It's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. Your mileage may vary. Uh, let's see. Can, oh, we're talking about Camp Gore's roof. Yeah, I'd be opening a can of worms for sure. I, I ripped apart the inside, and that nearly made me pull my hair out. Pull out my hair. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the thing of it is, just you got to be patient and. You know, and you can't be living in it if you're doing major remodel like that. Um, it just, it's just too impossible. <coughs> oh, Tim got his uh, his rig back from Cummins, and he says his AC is working great. That's that's good to hear. You're gonna need it, Tim. Darren says that diesel in Bend, Oregon, is around six fifty. Woo! That's California prices. Uh, Kevin Coop. Hi, Kevin. So nice to see you here. I uh, just took a trip from Missouri to Tampa and back. Most RVs uh, on the road we saw were Class A's. Uh, yeah, I... I don't know. I went up to Montana last week. And I passed a lot of campers, uh, tra or, uh, trailers, fifth wheels and travel trailers. And on the state highway going up to, towards Yellowstone. And on the interstate, it was a lot of Class A's. So I don't know what that means, except maybe I just was paying more attention when I was on the state highway. Of course, that's two lanes, too. So you probably, you know, you probably see them coming and pay more attention. But, and then second was fifth wheels. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, fifth wheels have gotten really popular. And I think it's because they're so much easier to tow. And they're so much more stable than towing a, um, a travel trailer. When you move that weight, the tongue weight, up off the, the, the rear end of that pickup and up into the bed, over the centered over the axles... Uh, that adds a lot of stability to your towing capabilities and, and that sort of stuff. Well, it's about half past, so I have to do my obligatory uh, one an hour commercial, and that is if you like what you see, give me that thumbs up. I always appreciate that. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Bring the notification bell. Lots of RV how-to and other RVing-related content to come. Um, you know, uh, working on the truck camper, uh, your questions or comments are always welcome. Uh, you can leave them in the chat window here, and we'll answer them tonight. And if I can't answer it, and some of the, you know, the crusties on here like Tom and Tim and me and, and Robert and some of those guys that have been RVing a while can't answer it, then I'll look it up, and we'll get you an answer the next week. Um, visit my uh, website, trbolin.com. That's always very helpful if you run over there uh, to the website. Just look around. Um, I posted the information that I was talking about here just a little while ago uh, on Yellowstone um, <clears throat> over there uh, for people. Um, and uh, visit my Amazon store. You know, I've had a really good month this month on Amazon. A lot of folks are supporting the channel, and I greatly appreciate that. You know, as an Amazon affiliate, I get a small commission, uh, but you pay the same price. And, you know, when you got projects like a truck camper that's full of rot, uh, every little bit helps, trust me. And then finally, uh, just watching my commercials, you know, uh, sharing my videos is really helpful. You know, if you see something that you like in one of the videos, just share it. Social media and those sorts of things. Uh, that's always greatly appreciated. So anyway, that's the obligatory commercial. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Oh, uh, uh, he said that one is a five is five years old. It's really nice to stay sale. That's not five years old. That Lance truck camper that I looked at today uh, was way more than five years old. 
Um, let me see if I can pop that up here since since we're going to chat about it a little bit. Uh, let's see. I think that was down here. I might have deleted it. No, here it is. I guess it was yesterday he sent this. All right. Let's see if I can go get all fancy here. Let's see. Nope, that one's not working. How about this? Nope. There it is. All right, so here's the truck camper. So, uh, sold, $1,500, Edmonds, Washington. Family camper, kids all growing up, good shape for a year. Uh, good shape for a year. Okay, three issues, two plastic covers on top need to be replaced, not leaking, temporarily sealed. Leak in water line under sink and bathroom. No water damage found from it. So that that Lance Camper, that's a late 80s, early 90s Lance. Maybe maybe late 90s, early 2000s. What does it, it didn't say what year uh, it was. It looks to be in okay shape though. I mean, you know, it's it it looks to be pretty decent. You know, all things considered. But anyway. I think I think the fifteen hundred was um, uh, I don't know if they sold it for fifteen hundred. Whoever got it got a real good deal um, because even at fifteen hundred, you could rebuild it and st it'd still be worth uh, four or five thousand. I would think. So interesting though, yeah. That's the kind of information I'd love to get on the side. You know, if you want to email that to me, trbolin at gmail dot com. Uh, always happy to share it. Oh, and by the way, you know, Two Feathers had a great suggestion. And that is, if you want to share pictures of your rig uh, with the audience, I'd be happy to do that. All you have to do is just email me your photos. Again, trbolin at gmail.com. And if you didn't get that, you can go to the About tab on my uh, uh, YouTube page here. And, and the, my email address is there. <clears throat> and you can email me your pictures, um, and I would be happy to share them. I know people would love to see your rig. Uh, we shared some of uh, uh, viewers a couple weeks ago, and yeah, um, it would be uh, that would be fun. I would enjoy that. Um, okay. Okay, X Racer. I may have missed this from earlier, but did if you decide you're going to replace the entire roof, I am. Yes. I really don't have much of a choice, KX. Um, I've gotten into it now. The the video you saw that I that posted on Sunday of the roof uh, was really recorded. Well, part of it was recorded in March. Uh, we had one good day, and I got out and did some scraping and, and got a lot of the stuff cleaned up in March. And then uh, the latter part of that video was recorded in uh, May. Um, early, well, 16th of May, 17th of May, somewhere in there, uh, when I finally got the rest of the, the crap scraped off the roof and, and got that roof off. And... Uh, I've gotten into it now far enough that, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to replace the whole roof. Now, a lot of the structure is still good, but what the problem is is that it leaked through and it leaked onto the ceiling panels. And the way those roofs are constructed, um, I'll try to remember to have a picture for you next week. I might be able to, I might have one here actually that we can see. Well, not really. That's not a good enough picture, so I won't <clears throat> bother with that one. But the inside surface that you see from inside the rig is a piece of what they call Luon plywood, and it's an eighth inch thick, uh, eighth to a quarter thick, depending upon the manufacturer. Most of it's an eighth inch thick. And then there's the structure. And in the case of my truck camper, it's two by fours, two by twos. Um, and then there is then on mine the back half as you saw if you watched that video there was one sheet of OSB that was back there because they had luggage rack rails in the back there and I'm sure they reinforced that uh, so you could put stuff on that roof 
right? I mean, that's why they have their luggage rails on there. I have a Thule box that I'm going to mount up there, a Thule ski carrier that I'm going to mount up there. I'll pro I'm going to put the, uh, the luggage rails back on, too. But the other thing is, is that um, I'm going to sheath, I need to sheath the whole roof. I'm going to do it with three eighths. And the reason I'm doing that is, is because I'm putting solar on there. I've got 500 watts of solar and I want to have, I want to make sure that's uh, screwed down to the roof really well. And I thought, well, maybe I could just adjust some of the structure. And I just said, to heck with it. I'm just going to go with three eighths ply across the whole top of the roof. That'll just make it that much more stiff, much more stable. And I'll be, I think, better off going down the road. So that's sort of the plan around that is to, uh, to resheathe it. Uh, then there was plenty of wood, especially along the side where it leaked, that was completely rotten. Uh, you saw some of that on the video that I ran on Sunday. Uh, so coming up this week uh, is, I call it Demo 1. It was the beginnings of the major portion of the demolition trying to get into the rotten wood. I shared a video last week with folks. Uh, that were on the chat uh, on the stream last week uh, you kind of saw which you know brought up questions you know I, I had quite a bit of it tore apart and I'm at the point now where I've got all the sides put back together now I'm working on the cab over part I'll get the cab over part done then I'll do the roof on the cab over back to sort of about the middle and then I'll tackle the rear uh, the walls in the rear on the passenger side are okay on the driver's side, uh, there's some rot, uh, there's some water damage, and uh, and I'm basically going to have to reskin the inside of the bathroom. Um, it looks like hell, <clears throat> and I'm not I haven't dug into it, but I can tell already the tops of the sheets are all rotten, and so no structure, no bueno, you know. And there's no love there, so anyway. All right, let's see what we can catch up here. Diesel and Liberal Kansas 502 with TSD. That's pretty good, Eric. Uh, I don't know that Kansas uh, has the gas taxes like we have in Idaho or Oregon. Um, you know, I, Idaho, I think, is in the top eight. I think it's one of the top eight states as far as gas tax goes for the state, for the state tax. Um uh, anyway, oh, and you know, the, I have to, you have to laugh because they're talking about some kind of federal gas tax holiday, which I think is 18 cents a gallon and has been forever. Um, 18 cents it really doesn't make a lot of, you know, on a 20 gallon tank, what is that? Uh, $3 and 60 cents. Doesn't seem like a lot of money when people will spend five or six dollars for a latte. Anyway, uh, that's just me. Well, let's see here. There are deals, deals when you, okay. Uh, it looks nice, dang, yeah. Uh, okay, shopped on, uh, Two Feathers says she shopped on Craigslist for a year before I found the right one for me. Yeah, you know, I shopped for my Class A for a year uh, before I got one. And then I looked for about, well, almost a full year uh, before getting the truck camper that I got. And look, I am not sitting here saying that I didn't go into this with my eyes wide open knowing that there were problems with this camper. I got a good enough deal on it. I felt like I could invest money in it and not get upside down. And so my goal right now is to keep it at five grand including the cost of the camper six maybe okay it depends on kind of how what i do with my power i've already got my panels and my uh batteries and that kind of stuff <clears throat> the lumber so far hasn't been too bad i'm into lumber for about 300 bucks and i probably have another hundred or so to put into it in lumber you know i'll probably be five or six hundred for lumber uh fortunately lumber's coming down in price so anyway, if you have other uh, RV related questions, be sure and throw them over in the chat window. Um, and I'd be happy to answer those tonight. If you uh, have any at all or you just want to make a comment, feel free.
Two Feathers says she had no idea what she wanted or needed. Yep, that's a good place to start. <laughs> and then do lots of research, for sure. Tom Downey asks, what do you think about Bigfoot campers, all fiberglass? I would have one. Uh, Arctic Fox um, has an all fiberglass. Uh, I have a good friend of mine. Uh, in fact, if you've been following the channel for a while, uh, if you go watch the roof replacement video from about 2018, I guess that's four years ago now, um, Rick, the guy that owned the lumber yard where I did the roof on my RV, had an Arctic Fox. And it's a fiberglass, and you get to see it quite a few times in that video. Uh, but yeah, he had an Arctic Fox. In fact, um, at that time, I told him, I says, you know, if you ever decide you want to get rid of the truck and the camper, let me know. He said, no, that ain't going to happen. Uh, so I, I would have an all fiberglass for sure. I thought about replacing the skin on this with Luon. And I could get sheets big enough <clears throat> that I could do one continuous sheet from front to back uh, on both sides. And then Luon's flexible enough. There'd be another sheet that would wrap down around the front and down inside and around where the cab is. Um, and then I'd have to have a full sheet in the back. But uh, I, that was... That was going to be about oh, somewhere close to $800 just for the Luon. And then you throw in another six or 700 for the glue, for the adhesive. Uh, and then uh, not having done large uh, chunks of fiberglass work like that ever, I felt I was just going to get in over my head really fast. And I work most of the time by myself, right? So I, I pretty much work by myself. Um, 80, 90 percent of the time, uh, I have people I can call on if I need an extra hand. I just prefer to work alone. I drink alone with nobody else. George Thorogood uh, for you there. Luan is monkey pod. I agree. KX Racer, my TC was built truck camper. By the way, was built exactly as you just described. Three eighths roof sheeting only on the rear for luggage. Yeah. Yep. Two feathers changed her mind and retracted a message. <laughs> camp Gore One. Uh, how do you think you're going to like this type of camping instead of the Class A? Well, I'm not going to be living in it full time, and I think I'm going to enjoy it a lot uh, because uh, it's going to be so much easier to get around. Uh, there's a lot less planning and logistics that go into moving. Uh, I can get further off road, you know. I I'll do a little expediting, expediting expedition uh, travel. I'm not going to get 50 miles off the road and break down and have to spend five thousand dollars to get my rig out. Uh, I watch those off road recovery guys and they get into some spots. Uh, that's for sure. And that can probably get real expensive. Uh, Tom Downey said he paid two, eighty-two for his new mar it was 235 when it was new then they had 18k at added extras yeah uh i don't remember the numbers on mine mine was about the same range i think uh for some reason i had three i thought i had 300 in my head but i that could, that could be wrong um and i paid uh, well, I paid fifty grand for that for Rusty, my Class A. Um, then I put thirty thousand dollar motor in it in twenty seventeen. So I guess I really paid about eighty for it. Um, but I also owned it for ten years. What was it? Three thousand six hundred eighty six days. Ten years, one month, ten days, or eight days, or something like that. I figured it out. Uh, let's see, uh, da, 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 catching up here. Uh, Eric Meyer, seems like everyone's RV is perfect. Yeah, uh, you know, it's Fords and Chevys. You know, people are proud of their rigs, and rightfully so, you know. There's some beautiful rigs out there. I just don't know how you can justify spending a half a million dollars on, uh, say, a 2022 Dutch Star. Or... You know, three, four hundred thousand on a fate. You know, on a uh, yeah, on anything. Um, it just 
I, you know, I guess if you got it, just spend it. Uh, Two Feather says, may want to put a metal L bracket on each raptor and joist. Yeah, I've actually thought about that. Uh, I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I've decided that uh, I've, I've got a layout. I don't have it here, but I've laid out what the roof's going to look like. And I'm going to go to two by threes. There's two by twos up there now. I'm going to go to two by threes in some strategic locations to provide a little bit more structure. The, the, the problem is, is the two befores are laying flat. And keep in mind that the strength of lumber is in the vertical position. It's not in the flat position. Okay. So if the roof was, if the lumber was vertical, there would be a lot more strength in it. Uh, but with it being flat, there's not. So I'm going to add some structure in certain spots, particularly up front where the solar panels are. And then I'm going to beef up the structure in the back a little bit. Uh, it, it kind of alternates 2x4s and 2x2s. Uh, but in the area where the solar panels are going to be, it's going to be 2x4s and 2x3s. And then back in the back, it's going to be 2x4s and 2x3s. Um, so that'll beef and st stiffen that roof up. Now, yes, I'm adding some weight. I'm not too concerned about it. I bought a one-ton truck. And so, uh, payload on that Chevy Silverado is 4650, give or take. Uh, it'll never get that heavy. It's only nine and a half feet, so it doesn't have, you know, it's not one of those big hulking, you know, ten and a half foot jobbers. But, um, you know, uh, and I'll probably, well, I had a fence blow down in the wind the other day, so I'm going to have to work on that sometime in the next couple days. I'm going to have to tear it down and rebuild it. At least 40, 50 feet of it. So that's going to take a couple days. Uh, and so I'm... And then I've got some traveling already planned for July. Yeah, if I'm done by the end of July, I'd be... I'll be happy. Um, it's pretty slow going. And then uh, also, you know, uh, it's starting to get warm. I mean, I drank a half a gallon of iced tea today, and I'm working on another half right now. It's really, you know, when you're working in the sun like that, it's really easy to get dehydrated. And I did one day last week and, and paid for it. But damn good idea, Two Feathers. A KX Racer says, what will be the biggest drawback camping with the TC versus my Class A? Well, I guess space, but, you know, I think probably the biggest drawback will be the, you know, having a nice separate bedroom on the same level that you don't have to climb up to get to. Um, uh, and then maybe an ice maker. <laughs> Because I had an ice maker in my residential fridge. Uh, and I think we've talked about this. I think I talked about it a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't know. Did I? I might be able to get that. Uh, hold on here just a minute. Uh, did those go here? Because I got some shots. I didn't get them sent. I'll sh share them with you next week. Uh, there are definitely some problems with the fridge. Now, when I tested it last fall, it was cold. You know, it was in the 50s, 40s. And it cooled down and everything was fine. But when I was doing some uh, work on it earlier this spring, I happened to notice some telltale yellow uh, in the uh, near the boiler of the fridge. And that's a sure sign that the boiler has leaked. And so right now, um, I've kind of decided that uh, I was looking at maybe going with a 12 volt. I'm concerned about that um, because I don't want to spend a lot of money on batteries. Here's a trade off. It, 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 there's always trade offs. If I go with a 12 volt, I'm thinking I probably want to add another battery. And there's another 600 bucks. Let's just call it 600 bucks. Over and above the 12 volt fridge, which is probably around a thousand. If I stick with the dual fuel, 
propane uh, 110, I can get a cooling kit, hopefully. And what the cooling kit is, is that you replace the back of the fridge. Uh, all of the boiler and everything just comes off of those, and you put a new one on. They're not new. They're rebuilt. And there's a company in Oregon, uh, not far, uh, actually, uh, on US-20 there, uh, just to the west of you, uh, out there in Eugene, or I mean in Bend. Well, a little bit further west. They're, they're past Eugene, headed towards coast. But they're building the, the cooling units. And I have an inquiry into them right now to see if they've got one for the 2611, the fridge I have. And uh, they'll probably be, it'll probably be 500 bucks. They'll probably be 150 shipping on it, something like that. Um, and then uh, uh, I'm going to replace the cooling on mine because I want to keep the dual fuel. Uh, and I'm just going to bite the bullet. Now, they do make a 12-volt. They do have 12-volt pencils. Okay, they're pencil heaters. Uh, I'll get some video, and we'll talk about this next week, because it might be interesting to folks to understand how your RV fridge works. Um, but you can get 12-volt uh, pencils, so you can have a 12-volt fridge uh, that will heat on 12 volts, um, not on 110. And I'm considering that as well. But... The long and short of it is, as long as you got propane, uh, you're good to go. And I think I'm going to stick with the dual fuel. The, 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 the body of the fridge, everything else is perfect. So anyway, I'll get some video next week. Uh, and I'll share that with you. And we'll chat a little bit about how uh, the, these fridges, the dual fuel fridges work. I'll slip back over here to the comments. Uh, from Jeff to Tom, he says he paid 40k for his 38 Beaver Contessa with 78 grand, 78,000 miles on it. That uh, was 239 when new. That's pretty good, Jeff. Yeah, uh, Tom says all the original owners on his only put 6,800 miles on it in nine years. He had to replace all the rubber. Uh, belts, tires, etc. That's not unusual. Tim Meyer says his is not perfect. A 15 year old, 15 years old, things break, but it is comfortable and was purchased with cash. The best kind of RV is one that's paid for. <laughs> Just like a car, the best car you can own is paid for. Um, I don't know. Did I do justice on KX Racers? The uh, biggest drawbacks. I think probably the other thing, too, is, is that with the Class A, I pretty much had everything for all my interests. So I could carry my golf clubs. I carried my fishing poles. I carried all this and all that, right? So I had space for all that. Now I'm going to have to load in and out. So if I'm going fishing and golfing, I'm going to have to put my fishing poles in and my golfing clubs in. And when I get home, I'll take the golf clubs out and I'll put the whatever, you know, the mountain bikes in and or... You know, and I'm, I'm looking to do a bike rack uh, that hangs off the back so your bikes, you know, hang up off the, uh, up off the tailgate. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff I'm trying to, to sort out. I've got to start making some major decisions, though, here. Um, I got all my lighting now is all sponsored. So uh, um, that's, uh, there'll be videos uh, coming on all that. I just got a TV antenna. Uh, for the truck camper that's sponsored. Um, so, you know, uh, getting the sponsored stuff has is, is been pretty nice. I just wish somebody like Jackery or Renji uh, would sponsor me. You know, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a wonderful Christmas. Okay, um, Eric Meyer says, I meant that there are no questions about problems. Yeah, for sure. Robert Black, anyone here ever get a fifth recoded, re-clear-coded? Re Any idea of the cost? Well, how long is it? You're probably looking at, I would guess, 8000 Five to eight thousand. 
if you have a body shop or a professional do it. You could do clear coat yourself. Um, the problem with re-clearing, here's the, here's the deal. It's almost impossible to just do clear coat. Because by the time you get it sanded, I'm assuming that the clear coat is failing, by the time you get it sanded and you get it smooth, you're into the pigment, you're into the paint, and then you've got to paint. And so you're usually looking at a full paint job. Uh, I know that on the Class A, uh, 20000 is not an outrageous price to get a Class A painted. Okay, a full paint job. Um, so I don't know that you can get it just re-cleared. Um, particularly if the clear coat is failing. Um, but if you could, it'd probably be at least 5,000, probably 8,000. And my guess is you would eventually end up having to paint it anyway. And, you know, let's just say 20,000 for a 40 foot class A. Uh, what is that? Uh, do the math real quick. $500 a foot. Uh, figure $500 a foot. To paint your uh, fifth wheel. I don't know that there's going to be a lot of difference. Uh, you know, it's the same amount of prep work and all that stuff. So I would guess $500 a foot, I, th I think, would be what you, what you might expect. Robert Black. Uh, okay, we got that. KX Racer, your wolf, your wolf, my wolf will be wheel wrong. My roof will be so strong using 2x4s and sheathing with 3H. His truck camper work uh, roof is may, uh, is only made using 1x4s. Uh, yeah, actually I went back and watched that video. Um, and I thought yours looked pretty strong. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I think it will be pretty good. Um, pretty stable. Uh, and again, you know, I expect to go off-roading a little bit in it, so I'm kind of beefing it up. I'm making it a lot more stiff. Uh, as you saw when you took it apart, they use these staples that remind me of the staples. I worked in a spud warehouse, being in Idaho, you have to work in the spuds at least once in your life. And one of my, bo one of my jobs was stapling 50-pound boxes of spuds. Potatoes, for those of you that don't know what a spud is. Anyway, um, and, you know, there are these long metal staples, you know, that crimp in. Well, this is all their, they put these joints together uh, with just these staples. And um, so, you know, everything was kind of loosey-goosey. Uh, it's going to be much stiffer when I'm done with it. And, yeah. Uh, Eric Meyer says he has an 06. It's not perfect, but I fixed most of the minor things, so it's very good for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, owning an a RV, any kind of RV, it's like owning a house, and it takes maintenance. And you can't skimp on the maintenance. If you do, you're, you get yourself in trouble every time. So don't chintz on the maintenance. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, I think that it's, I don't know, what do I think? I guess maybe I'm thinking that uh, uh, well, well, we won't just we won't go there. <laughs> I'll save that for another day. Eric Meyer says tea is a diuretic. It sure is, so is coffee. And it doesn't count as fluids. Uh, but I also drank uh, three big bottles of water today, Eric. Tim Myers, he's in the same boat. Eric Myers, I have a few things planned, but have spent quite a bit this year, so backing down on spending for a while. Yeah, totally. Well, and Tim just retired here, too. So, you know, he's, uh, you know, us retirees, we have to watch our P's and Q's and, and nickels and dimes. Eric says he hasn't spent much uh, except for airbags, maintenance, and tires. Yeah, the tires is expensive for sure. Tim says Beaver's a nice motorhome. Eric says he got lucky. Tom Downey says yes. 
Yeah, um, Beavers make a good motorhome. Uh, they don't. They're not made anymore. Um, I think it was AZ Expert. He's on YouTube here. He's another. Uh, well, he's a professional RV technician, uh, maintenance technician, and I think he bought a Beaver. Tom says that Beaver's a great motorhome. They couldn't find one. <clears throat> Three hundred dollars per gallon now. Clear coat over. Can go over clear coat with Hellcat Clear. Uh, use doing OE now. Gel cat. I hate autocorrect. Yeah, I do too. Poor, poor pedophil me. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right, so one last call for any questions or comments you might want to throw out there. And then uh, otherwise we'll get things wrapped up and... Uh, and uh, we'll get to see you next week. Okay, well, we're at just one hour. And uh, <clears throat> gel coat. Okay, Tom, I got you now. Clear coat can go over coat with Hellcat Clear using one now. The problem is, is that if the clear coat fails and it's, uh, it's flaking off and... You have to sand that. I mean, I guess you don't. Okay, I mean, I do because I have OCD. But, yeah, you can just paint right over stuff. And, uh, and you know, fact is, it's probably going to look just fine. I just know that it would drive me crazy. Oh, I, and I missed a comment. I was just kind of scanning back here real quick. And uh, uh, Two Feathers has a great story about the wind in Idaho where she cleaned up a parking lot and found $20 at the same time. Not far from here, just north of here, the casino up uh, I-15 here in Blackfoot. Well, Fort Hall, technically. Okay, Tim, yeah, let's call it a night. Same back time, same back channel. Hearing no further questions, we're going to call this meeting over. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. It's so fun to have everybody here. Um, uh, yeah, KX Racer says, thanks for recommending Surge Protector. And having a video on it. Mine was installed and worked great. Yeah, I saw that uh, video. I saw your electrician buddy there helping you. Uh, and it looked good. Good night, Camp Goer 1. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Robert Black, you can you clear coat over the decals? Uh, yeah, you probably can. Um, Robert, I, I don't know why you couldn't. Um, I'm just trying to think here. You know, unless the clear coat reacted with the decal and caused the decal to blister, because that could happen. Uh, you know, I would probably spend ten or twelve dollars on a can of clear coat. Uh, go to your favorite auto parts store, your uh, auto paint supply store, and pick yourself up a can of clear coat, and in a couple of unnoticeable, unobnoxious places, uh, do some tests. And just test it on those decals and make sure it doesn't lift them. Um, good night, Judy. Tom's down. He says, no sanding over gel coat. It will dissolve the old clear coat. Uh, well, I, I don't know. If you're talking gel coat, yes. If you're talking full paint coach with paint and clear coat, no. You can sand on it all day. But if it's a true gel coat, yes, you're right. Um, good night, KX Racer, so much. Thank you so much. Two feathers, good night. Good night, Robert. Uh, stay cool, and we'll try. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I sure do appreciate it. Until we see you next week, peace. Good night. Sweet dreams. Where's the off button? Here it is. <laughs> Uh, Tom says they will dissolve the cellophane. Yeah, I kind of worried about that. That's why I was saying I would I would test that clear coat in an obnoxious, an unobnoxious place, and make sure that it didn't ruin the decals. All right, nighty night all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Oops, that's not what I want. I want this one. Good night. See ya. <laughs>